Hi, good evening everyone. Uh, I just wanted to hop on here really quick uh, just to do a brief video about what is ULA and how can the seven principles of ULA help you. Now this is just going to be a real brief um, reading from the very first part of the book and um, if there's time and if there's questions I will be happy to answer them uh, when I'm done. Just real quick I'll give you my story. Uh, my name is Carrie. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at KC Paleo Girl. And I found the ULA book, I guess it would be about a year ago now. <clears throat> Excuse me. I won the uh, buy one, give one promotion, which I thought was really cool. So basically, the premise of that was you had to submit a reason why if uh, they gave you two books, you know, who you would give it to and why, and I won that and gave it to the person that I mentioned in my post. But then I got the book for myself and I really started reading it, because honestly, I, you know, I, self-help stuff, been there, done that. Uh, every self-help, direct marketing guru out there, I had probably read at that point. Um, but the one thing for me that stood out the most was one of their F's, in the seven F's of ULA, was faith. And since that is such an important part of my own life, I thought that it was very important to include that, for them to have included that, excuse me, as well. And even though I'd known that a lot of the motivational speakers that I'd followed before were Christian, they were unabashedly, like they included the ULA guys, uh, Dr. Dave and Dr. Troy, they included that as part of a balanced life. And I, there's so many that just don't do that. They, you know, it's having the perfect marriage and the perfect kids and the perfect job and perfect health. And it, But the one word that I, that I love that they use is finding balance in an unbalanced world because <clears throat> all you have to do is watch, watch the news for five minutes to see that there is balance that has been lost in our lives and you know we're not going to reach perfection this side of heaven but balance is something we can try to grow towards so anyway I'm gonna read you first off a section from the ULA book called the purpose All right, let me see if I can do this while I'm looking at you the purpose of this book is clear we want to lead you to an ULA life we want to show you what ULA looks and feels like and how to get there. We will define ULA and share our stories regarding our different paths to ULA. The heart of the book is the seven F's of ULA. Here we will clearly define the seven areas of life that deserve balance and growth. We will identify the seven roadblocks that can get in the way of the life you want and introduce the seven accelerators that can get you the ULA life faster. We will close the book with the three simple steps to the ULA life. We will provide two perspectives to educate, entertain, and inspire you on your journey. Mm -hmm. One perspective will be from the ULA seeker, and that's Dr. Dave, who once had ULA, lost ULA, and is now committed to getting his ULA back. Another perspective is that of the ULA guru, Dr. Troy, who is committed to the ULA life. By opening up and sharing our stories, our true stories, excuse me, knowledge and experiences, we hope to inspire you to pursue, to pursue a life that is balanced and growing. An ULA life is worth the effort and pursuit. Please hear us that regardless of where you are in life and what's in your rearview mirror, you are worthy of better. You are worthy of ULA. Congratulations on this noble pursuit. And then, an introduction to ULA. Because a lot of people will ask me, they're like, well, what is ULA? Because it's such a strange word. And it actually is short for ULA LA, which I thought was really cool. So, they said in, in one word for Drs. Troy and Dave, it, it summed up for them what they were trying to do with their life. You know, that it summed up the balanced and growing parts of their own lives. So... Again, here's an introduction to ULA. ULA is simply a life that is balanced and growing in all the key areas of health and well-being. It can be a noun, 
or a verb. It can be a destination or a feeling. It can be as complex as a life growing and balanced in fitness, finance, family, field, faith, friends, and fun, which are the seven F's of Ula, or as simple as a sunset, a quiet book on the beach, or a special moment with your child. It is that place we all shoot for in life. The feeling we experience as we celebrate our successes along the way. In short, Ula is cool. In this section, we will dig a bit more in depth into Ula. To further help you understand Ula, we show, through our own true examples, what a life in Ula looks like and compare that to one out of Ula. We will also explain how two young guys, almost identical in beliefs, passions, goals, and dreams at one point in their lives, met up years later to find out they were in much different places, and how this gap helped confirm the need to repeatedly assess where you are in relationship to your goals, prepare a plan, and follow a path. So, uh, just for the sake of accountability, I'm currently working on the F of fitness because due to some uh, adrenal gland issues, I actually had, if you're familiar with the term, adrenal fatigue. Um, another popular way to say that is uh, HPA axis dysregulation. It sounds fancy, but it basically means you're tired all the time and your body has gotten to the point where your adrenal glands are pumping out so much adrenaline that they're almost ready to stop and it's not a good place to be. Um, I was really, really quite sick. Um, so I changed to a more paleo type diet. I, <clears throat> for a time, eliminated grains and dairy. I still don't, I do some dairy now, but I still don't do pretty much any grains. Um, except for, I found out that Young Living has einkorn flour, which is an ancient grain, and I tried that in some banana bread this last weekend, and it was fabulous, and I did not have a reaction, so I am super pumped about that. Um, so anyways, I made some changes, but unfortunately, the pr practitioner that I was seeing, I, I couldn't even go for a walk. I mean, she, she wanted me to park really close to where my job was, so I didn't have to walk very far. Uh, she almost, she actually tried to get me to do a handicap sticker, and I was like, I'm not doing that. I mean, I may be tired, but I'm not handicapped. I'm a little stubborn, maybe, but that was just who I am. I don't don't expect any special treatment and I really didn't want that for myself. I didn't want to get into that mindset. So anyway, all that to say, I went nearly two years without any form of physical fitness. Like I didn't do, I didn't even do walking, restorative yoga, nothing. And I had, prior to my diagnosis, I had been doing kind of Bob Harper style CrossFit workouts. Uh, nothing, you know, like I didn't do deadlifts or anything like that. It was mostly kettlebell, <clears throat> excuse me, kettlebells and body weights. But um, yeah, so it was a little bit disheartening uh, to go through that. But at any rate, um, it was, you know, I, I just, I was at convention this year. It was the first year I've gone. I was listening to other guys talk and they, they said, what's your one thing? What is that one thing that's been nagging at you? Um, one thing that uh, has been nagging at you and that you've kind of lost integrity with yourself on? Uh, what is it that you've been telling yourself you're going to do and then you haven't done it? And for me, that was fitness. I kept telling myself, you've got to get back to not necessarily working out. I mean, I, would, I don't think I'll ever be in a place where I'm doing CrossFit style workouts, it's just too much for me. Um, it causes too much stress to my body and I'm still healing from all of that. So it's just not something that, uh, yeah, it's just not for me. So I started with walking. Um, I've only done it a couple times a week. My goal is to make it to more, but I'm, you know, it's progress. And that's, to me, in a nutshell, what Lula is about. You pick your, you, you know, you, they, it, they mention it in the book, but basically you do your wheel and you kind of see what areas of your life and the seven F, Fs, excuse me, that I mentioned, where you could balance and grow. And then when you do that, you just pick one area and you start to work on that. You just, just one. Yeah, there are seven areas, but, you know, for a type A like me, I wanted to tackle all of them at the same time, and that's just not really a good thing um 
So my one thing from after convention was to lift for, was fitness. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, I'm, I'm committed to at least walking 30 minutes three times a week. Um, I'd like to eventually get to where I'm doing that every day. But I started off the other day doing a 10 minute walk and you know, my muscles, they're just not what they were, but at least I went out and I did something. So I'm kind of balanced, right? Because I'm a type A person and the type A in me really wanted to keep going. But the growing part of me in fitness knew that it would be too much. So I cannot say enough good things about this book and um, if there's interest, I would love to do a Periscope book club. Um, I've talked, I talked to the ULA guys at convention, and they're willing to do an intro video, so I'm not sure how that would work on Periscope, but, you know, maybe I could do a Facebook group and they could add it to that. I don't know. But, um, anyway, I appreciate y'all for joining in, and uh, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot, and if not, then we'll say our goodbyes, and... Again, my name is Carrie Brewster. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook as Casey pa Paleo Girl on Twitter at Carrie Brewster. Okay, well. It looks like we don't have any questions, so I will close it up for now. Y'all have a great evening. I hope you didn't mind the cicadas too much.